So, what up? Thank you for coming one more time. You already know me. My name is Black Sunk and well, yeah, today as you can see, I have actually a few updates before we start with the actual video. So, first of all, as you can see, I have a new microphone. Uh, this is a USB microphone, but I think it will really improve the quality of the videos. Uh, I'm currently working on setting up a anti-pop filter so the won't sound as much as they do right now and uh, I'm working also on learning how to master audio for podcasts so they can sound better and uh, a part of that I changed the setup of my studio well you know my studio is my room uh, and I, I sleep here but I wanted to manage my space in a better way so I was having kind of an L shape in my room I changed it and now I have a square shape and it is way better and even though I have that little table over here the space is the setup is way better this way so now uh, oh yeah and also something funny I have this uh, delay option and I play with it a lot so yeah as you know I have been producing music I have been making music since 2015 I think and of course my first songs were rubbish every producer for a song is rubbish because I didn't know a lot of things and I feel like there are a lot of tutorials but they focus on other things things like how to make this genre or how to master a kick the right way or well you know a lot of things but I feel like these videos telling you like basic things there are not that much so I wanted to make this video without further ado these are five things that every starting producer should know and not a lot of people will tell you these things but they are really useful number one and I think is the most important part of everything louder is not better so that an instrument or sample is loud doesn't mean it sounds better EQ, reverb and delay and even side chaining or docking what you use are important on the channel of that sound if it sounds bad because of other things making it louder will be worse because you know if something is bad making it bigger making it stronger won't make it better most of the time it would make it worse turning up the volume of your headphones or the speakers or monitors you're using when mixing and especially mastering is a bad idea so don't do it it really is a very good idea to make your music and master and mix at a low level so you can really focus on the sound quality and not the loudness or other things it's not the same as compression because that's another topic but the main volume of sound well at least when you're producing should be low I'm not saying the actual volume like in electronic music usually you have to compress to 0, 0.0 db but uh when you're listening to it you should really low the volume oh and adam neely said it on a video it also affects pitch so be careful <clears throat> When I listen to music quietly, it sounds like it's in a different key to when I play it louder. What? So yeah, this is crazy. How loud you listen to a piece of music actually affects your perception of pitch, and because of that, might affect your perception of key center. As the music that you're listening to gets louder, the high frequencies start sounding higher in pitch, and the low frequencies start sounding lower in pitch. It's for this reason that I know that a lot of sound engineers prefer to mix at very low volumes. They monitor very quietly, so as to not not alter their pitch perception of the music that they're working on. In other words, don't turn up the music too loud, kids, because then all of the music that you're listening to starts sounding like it's in different keys. And we can't have that, because remember, the synth and the vocals are in the same key. Thank you for your cooperation. Number two is avoid uh, doing everything with headphones on when I'm mastering or when I'm mixing or when I'm making sure everything sounds in place I use monitors or speakers. You can use any pair of decent speakers and even though I'm not an expert I think I figured out the reason why a lot of people recommend this and it is because headphones make everything sound in place. Well for example when you use headphones to listen to music you can hear the stereo for example you can hear the right channel and the left channel and of course there are speakers that will have left channel and, and right channel and it is okay 
bad headphones, you know, you're really immersed into the music. The issue with that is that even though your mixing may be bad or your mastering may be bad, headphones will make it sound in place. So it is kind of a two-sided sword. I recommend you to master and mix and even make music if you have the chance without headphones. Use headphones for really little things or if it is a must, if it is a need, but if not, try to use the other. Number three is use your eyes too, unless you're blind and yeah, they can demonetize me because of something that doesn't intend to be a joke but sounds like a really bad taste joke. So in my particular case, I use FL Studio by ImageLine and the number one DAW digital audio workstation in the market alongside Ableton, Cubase, Pro Tools and Logic and well, some people use Courage. All of these programs have visual helpers on EQ plugins usually. Let's take Fruity EQ2 as an example. This plugin allows you to use seven different EQ points with the chance to change their shape and visualize what you're hearing. Now, comes the important part of this. If you have to cut some frequencies because an instrument is sounding bad or the sample has a beepy sound that you want to cut off and you're kind of confused doing it only by ear, use that visualizer to look for the stronger sound and it may help you out a lot. So uh, here's an example. back to my fourth advice would be don't overuse samples or instruments so I used to do this a lot like in every song I would be using the same uplifters and uh, stabs and impacts and kicks and claps and hats and loops and everything and every song sounded the same it is okay to have some signature sounds like Camel Fat does with their drum loops because there's a very specific sound. Or, well, a whole genre, big room, use Pride Snares. And it is okay, it is completely okay. But if the sound is an instrument and your melodies are always similar and uh, somewhat boring, it can backfire. It can be, one more time, a two-sided word. Fortunately, it was something, in my case, I noticed on time and I stopped doing it, but you can hear it. You can listen to my songs, for example, Ring. You can listen to the Sandstorm remix I made or maybe Lemon and the drops sound very very similar both in timbre and the melodies are like in the same place and it doesn't look that good it sounds like you're a bad producer because you're reusing the same sounds it sounds like you don't want to get out of your comfort zone so try to avoid that okay to use the same loop in two songs but try to change something I don't know raise the pitch lower the pitch change its modulation do something different in every song make every song unique in synthesis have your own sound but don't burn it and number five don't be a cheap ass I mean don't get me wrong it's 
not like I have a lot of money uh, in expensive gear. You know, these headphones were like $60. This microphone was like $40. No, my, my gear is not expensive. I think my most expensive gear is my computer and my camera, but it is because I have money to do that and I'm okay. Well, I have money to do that. So it is okay if you don't have money. I'm not judging you. I have been there too. But if you do have, <coughs> holy shit. But if you do have money, don't be a cheap ass. Invest in year. I have been able to invest. I have done it. Even if it meant sacrificing a couple of beers or energy drinks, hanging out with my friends a couple of times or even my sacred, loved and holy hamburgers. You know, I'm addicted to hamburgers. And I sacrificed a couple of them because I had to buy something. The microphone, my camera, my PC, my keyboard, my mouse, whatever it is. When you have a lot of money, you don't have to sacrifice anything. But when you don't, well, do it. Because it is for your own good. It is here that you will use. Production with only a laptop is possible today. But if you can get more gear, do it. Invest your money the right way. And take this as a piece of advice for life. Don't have expenses, have investments. Things that will give you money back, that will make a profit for you. And I think those will be my, my five pieces of advice. I am not an expert producer, I'm on my way. I feel like these advices will help you out a lot if you're just starting. So yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. Remember to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I have a TikTok and I don't have TikToks because as my bio says, I want to make TikToks, but I'm better at making music and vlogs. Insta at Blacksunk. Hey, I should do production or like funny music things on TikTok. That will be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice night and keep dancing. Keep dancing. 2022. Woo!